Hey everyone, and welcome to uh, my session. So this is the developer portal for Microsoft Teams. Uh, in a very, very quick nutshell, this is our new and improved App Studio experience. We've made it a website so that you can access it from the browser, and uh, we will also be embedding it in Teams just like App Studio. So it should uh, be accessible in the way that you're using it today if you like using App Studio in the Teams client. Uh, but we felt like we were missing an opportunity to really capture some value with App Studio by really repurposing it as the app management console for developers. Uh, even if you look at the URL here, it's dev.teams.microsoft.com. It's very similar to admin.teams.microsoft.com. Admins have a portal where they can go and take administrative actions on the apps in the organizations that they've uh, published or are waiting to publish see analysis of uh, analytics on those apps, how they're performing. Uh, developers, you also need the same set of tools. Uh, primarily, App Studio was used as a manifest editing experience, and that's still there, but uh, I, we believe that there is more that can be done, and we've set Dev Portal up as the foundation from which to build up this experience. So let me just get started with the bread and butter of the developer portal, and that is registering, configuring your Teams app. Uh, I already have one right now. This is my list of apps already in my demo tenant, and I already have one app that I've created. And adding a new app is as simple as adding one in App Studio. You're just going to add an app, you get a name. The one key difference between this experience and the one you get in App Studio now is that we're going to be actually providing you with the unique app ID for your Teams app, and that's going to be locked for this uh, for the app registration that you provide. So you won't be able to go ahead and just provide your own GUID as the ID for an app uh, any longer. So we're doing this because it's just enables us to provide some more goodness in the developer portal, uh, which I'll get, you'll see in a second, uh, but also uh, prevents collisions. Uh, we are running into errors by having people provide their own app IDs where, where in the back end we were just observing that there were multiple apps with the same ID and it was really difficult to, to consolidate that and figure out what's the true representation of that app. So this should simplify things. You are still going to be able to import an app from an app package. If we detect that that app ID has already registered to another app or belongs to another app, there will be a process to upgrade that. This will not affect anything you already have in production. So rest assured that, that this is just for pre-published apps. So this will not affect anything that you have in production out in the wild already. I'm going to click into this app now and just see uh, what the new configuration experience looks like. We're not boiling the ocean here. It's uh, it should be familiar to you if you are familiar with editing your manifest in App Studio. Uh, I'm going to go over the key areas that differ from App Studio. And the first one will be this owners page. And this will allow you to add contributors or administrators to an app. Let's say Vesa and I are working on an app together at Microsoft. I don't want to email him the zip package, have him import it into App Studio, and start making changes. A um, much simpler approach would just be to add him as an owner or contributor. This <laughs> You'll be seeing bugs as we head towards build. This should read contributor, not operative, which sounds a little bit evil. Uh, but you can, the idea is you can have an administrator who has full rewrite privileges to an app. They can delete the app. And then you have contributors who can just change the configuration of an app. Next up is uh, environment configuration. So you build an app. You have it running on localhost, and then you push it to staging. The content's being hosted somewhere like dev.azurewebsites.com. And then finally, once it's ready to deploy up to production, it's being hosted in your production server. Obviously, your content URL endpoints are changing. And uh, what we heard was people were just managing, were, had different manifest files that represented each stage of their development pipeline. And to simplify this, uh, we've provided this environment configuration feature in the dev portal. So I'm already created some variables here, but let me just walk through what it means. So I'm just, you can go ahead and create an environment. I've created two environments already, Karthik's local environment and Karthik's development environment. And once you create an environment, you can start creating variables for that environment. So here we have content URL for local and it's pointing to local host. And if I switch to my development environment, it's pointing to a random staging website. And obviously the next step would be to create your production environment. And then we also have a notion of global variables. And let me go and show you how you would use these. Okay, so I'm going to go into capabilities. And here I've already created a personal app, which at one point was called tabs. 
And the content URL right now, it's my local environment and it's pointing to locals 3000. But rather than hard code this, let me go ahead and edit it. Uh oh. Back here. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. There's a bit of a bug that's preventing me from editing this right now. Uh, let's do something else. I'm going to create a brand new one. All right, we're going to add a group one. And I'm just going to say content URL rather than a hard coded uh, URL value. And I'm going to say that this is for the channel scope, and I'm going to save it. And if you go to the manifest now, what you should see is rather than the environment variable name, you should see what that is pointing to. So do, 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 configurable tab, perfect. So we actually did not enter localhost 3000 tab. We entered content URL, but it got injected into my local environment. Now, what we should do is go back here and do the exact same thing for the development environment so that Okay, perfect. Okay, it's, uh, that's already taken care of. And I believe we've already defined a content URL for the development environment. Perfect. So let's go back. The development environment's content URL variable is set to dev.azure.com. So if we go back to the manifest and switch to dev, that's what we should see. Perfect. Excellent. So we've made it a little bit easier for you guys to hopefully collaborate together with developers within your organization. We're exploring whether we want to extend this so that you can collaborate on apps with developers in other tenants. That's just something we're exploring right now. But right now, uh, access to these apps is restricted to other members of your organization. You can't invite anyone outside of your organization. So that's something actually I'd be interested in hearing about from this community. Are you interested in adding owners, contributors, some other resource access group as a participant in an app in your tenant? For example, are you a service integrator working with clients? and you'd like to invite some of your clients development developers to share a particular app. So that's something we're interested in hearing about. So let me step back here for a second and just take a look at this apps view right now. So like I said, this is restricted to apps in your organization. And as a user, you only have access to the apps that you've registered yourself with the service or that someone has shared with you. One thing to note is that we will be exposing Everything that you see in this view, the all apps view and the per app view and the configuration capabilities that go into it in Microsoft Graph. Meaning there's going to be a Microsoft Graph API that says, get me app ID, this app ID, and then update basic information, short name to my app to or whatever. So if you don't want to come to the developer portal, if you don't want to use the CUI to configure your app registration or even create your app registrations, you can do so from the command line and just plug all of this into your CI CD pipeline. In fact, there's going to be, uh, let's go back here once more second. So right now, this is your all apps view. How do you add apps to this view? You can do it from the new app button. You can do it from the import app button. You can do it from Microsoft Graph and Microsoft, Graph's entry point is also how our big toolkit 2.0 update that will be coming out at build will be registering apps with the Teams app service. So our goal is to accommodate how you work and make sure that you guys are effective and successful in your day-to-day -day jobs. So we do have some tooling that I don't want to spend too much time on right now because I think these sort of speak for themselves and have used them in the past. You should be familiar with it. I would just like to open up the floor in case there are questions coming in the chat. I will answer them now. If anybody wants to unmute and ask me a question, I'm happy to take questions right now too. Thanks, Kartik. So there was a question is just commenting that having capability of adding an external work to add admins and devs would be really useful. So there's a one thumbs up on that one. Anybody else we would love to comment? Actually, can I dig into that actually? Absolutely. So the person who asked the question, so they said that that would be helpful. Would you mind just describing uh, your scenario to me so that I understand it? Are you a service integrator? Are you uh, somebody who uses consults, consultants in your organization? Uh, I would just love to learn more about that. So. 
we are the meeting settings are unfortunately in a way that attendees cannot unmute okay. uh okay, so because we're having so many people on the on the meeting but if kusham can actually elaborate on that one in the chat that would be really really good then hilton is commenting uh, presumably this would be a part of viva connections deployment uh, so we could be actually integrating uh, this one part of the viva connections and viva connections obviously is, is technically a, a microsoft teams application and that there will be a deep linking on that one to personal applications and bots as well so there there is a connection absolutely on that so no changes from that perspective okay folks uh if there are no other questions what i will say is i will be presenting at build next week. So my session is VRK215. We'll be going over our pretty significant update to the Teams toolkit where we're going to be announcing awesome cool features like a new SDK that's going to deliver single line authentication. And as well as you'll see how the new toolkit will play nicely with the developer portal. So stay tuned for that. And before you go, I would like to show you one more uh, nifty feature that we've added. And this is one of the reasons we had to lock down the ID. And it's so that we can provide this useful tile to you. So if you have an app registered in the App Studio service and it's published to the Teams App Store, you're going to actually be able to see. I haven't published this yet. This is just a demo app. <laughs> but uh, what you will see is actually trend charts that will track uh, active users for your app over a period of 7 days, 30 days, and 60 days. Okay, And we're still figuring out what that will looks like for the LLB space if you're building line of business applications. So I'll leave you with that. That's actually a really, really cool feature and so widely asked for App Source as well. So really, really cool to have it directly in the developer portal. But thank you, Kartik, on that one. And, and like already promoted so many times in Microsoft Build, there's an awesome set of sessions and awesome announcements coming up on the Teams platform. Don't miss them out. Kartik is going to do a live session there as well, uh, unless I'm completely mistaken. It is a live session, isn't it? Live session. Yeah, yes. there we go. So, um, so that's going to be really, really cool. And awesome set of features coming on, to, on the Teams Toolkit V2 as well. But let's not talk about those yet because somebody would be angry if we would do that. Thank you. Thank you, Kartik. Mm -hmm.